cloud. There we go. Okay, so just name us. Okay, so we are here at the nominations, evaluations, and council policy committee meeting of the Town of Orono Town Council. Present are Clint Deshan, Town Manager, Sarah Marks, Chair of this committee, Jacob Baker, Rob Laraway, both Town Councilors, Sonia Berthesel, no longer Town Councilor, is here as a consultant capacity for a document she provided to us about 360 evaluation processes. That is it. Okay, who's got the agenda, Clint? Is number two um, just moved straight into Sonia's report? I do have the agenda, and I believe, yes, you are correct. Okay. I can look yep. Do you want to screen share Sonia's report up? Well, it's the, uh, you know, actually, reviewing the council's policies and procedures manual came before the 360. Ah, okay. It. So we should touch base on that. Um, if folks feel like we need a discussion in detail about that today. You should speak up. Um, I did speak with Council Chair Demerit um, before this meeting, and um, there is a bit of a time crunch potentially on the 360 evaluation process. I think the hope would be to have one in place and ready to go out to the public in February so that results would be back before April, which I believe would be our second time to sit down with our town manager. Clint, is that your understanding that council will sit down with you once in November and once in April? Yeah, I mean, we got to kind of, I think that's part of the conversation. I think that's the intent as it stands today, Sarah. I think we need, just need to be, we're building this, so there's no rigid lines yet. We got to kind of establish them. Yeah. 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 So I guess what I want to hear from the committee is, does anyone feel the need to do policy and procedures manual today, or are we comfortable focusing on 360 evaluation processes today? I think going to just the evaluation is probably fine, it's especially it's probably a good use of Sonia's time to jump into that. Jacob? Yes, that works because that's what I prepared for. I didn't read the other one, so that works. Okay. All right, wonderful. So we have um, a report from Sonia with attachment links. Um, I have some questions I structured for us that we might want to address also today. I think the first thing though might be to just go ahead through this report and we have Sonia here and any specific questions about it that we want to ask her. Um, she did a really great job with this. Very appreciative of her expertise in bringing that to us. Um, I think the first part here just talks about what a 360 evaluation is. Um, Sonia, is there anything you want to say about that or does anyone have any questions on that? It talks about the idea that the evaluation is done by everyone who interacts with that person, whether it's their superior, their subordinate, um, potentially a peer relationship, I think that might apply to us as a council when we're evaluating ourselves, um, since we would be evaluating it's sort of a self and it's sort of peers, right? Because we're sort of evaluating ourselves as a group. I think in Clint's case for a town manager, I, Sonia, you can say if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen anything indicating that we would be asking peers of Clint's in other towns to evaluate him. So I'm thinking the peer part may not apply there. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments or anything for Sonia on the basic intro here to what a 360 evaluation is? I just, yeah, I, the only thing I would, no question on it. I just think that some part of what Sonia said is, and what you see in some of the documents she attached, this may be a phased approach. You know, you don't always just jump head first all the way into every 360. You sometimes work them in steps. So that mm -hmm. would be the only piece that I, that would be part of the conversation I think we have both on the council and the manager side. Um, yep. Yep. And I guess I didn't mention that obviously in our case, you know, consumers would be all, all residents of the town of Orono um, yep. when we're looking at that. Yeah. Okay. Just the two other things that maybe I want to highlight about this section are one, it is um, the recommendation from various um, organizations that have really studied these in depth and, and see them as a useful tool is that we do make a evaluation like this really tailored to what we want to understand and how we operate in the town of Orono. So I do think it's, you know, council's role to come up with how we want to do this as a town um, rather than 
like importing what worked in, you know, uh, New York City or something. And um, and then the other piece is, uh, and this may be a little bit later in the report, but there is some um, recommendations that it makes sense to decouple the results of an evaluation like this from um, the way that compensation is measured out for employees, because that make, that can help people who are being evaluated feel more open to feedback. Um, and so we want honest feedback of uh, people in power, including counselors and the town manager. And uh, we also don't want there to be fear that that honest feedback will have negative repercussions right away. We want people to have the opportunity to really integrate feedback and improve. And so building um, how this integrates with a work plan is definitely recommended. Thanks, Sonia. I noticed that also when we were, um, when I was reading through all the documents you provided, I thought it was a really important piece of information that it really is recommended that it be decoupled and not happen at the same time that you're gonna be looking at a compensation decision. So I think that's something we need to talk about and probably also bring back to our council chair because um, my understanding is we probably would be looking at compensation decisions as part of the budget process in the spring, Clint. Is that correct? So yeah, part of me wonders good. on the yeah. timing of this and whether it would make more sense for this kind of 360 evaluation to actually happen, not in our April, but in our November you know, evaluation next year is actually what makes more sense to me having read this document. So I'm, and also the attachments that had, consistently that same recommendation of decoupling those two things. Um, I don't know how other counselors here feel about that, but feel free to speak up. Question on, um, so how this process plays into compensation because isn't compensation also heavily uh, governed, regulated, dictated by our union agreements? This is only the manager compensation, not yeah, anybody okay. else's. Right. The only person we'd be evaluating is our town manager and ourselves as a council. So, Perfect. and we don't, right. I mean, we, we technically get compensated, but basically nothing. I mean, we each get yeah. if, like a thousand a year or something. Um, right. Okay, great. So I think the time frame that was my first question to all of you that, um, although, you know, Dan had originally suggested this February format, I saw recommendations in the ICMA document also really suggesting that this not be done until a town manager had been in place for a full year. Um, so I feel from that and these other recommendations about decoupling from compensation decisions that a better time to do our town manager evaluation to the community would be in the fall, next fall. I think council evaluation doesn't, I mean, we've been around a while, right? So we've been here more than a year and we don't really get compensated. So theoretically, perhaps we could do the council one in February and the manager one in the fall if we wanted to separate them. But I guess I wanted to hear from any of you and any further thoughts on that. I want to hear from you guys first, but I had a general thought after I read uh, Brian's information as well. Did everyone see that, that I had made a request to um, the um, school board chair if he and the superintendent were willing to create a document for us about their experiences with their 360 evaluations? Because in Sonia's document, she had highlighted that we do have in town um, these processes going on already at the RSU. And she had sent us links to their surveys, which many people in Orono obviously have already filled out because if you have a child in the schools or you work in the schools in any way, this is a format that folks in Orono are pretty used to at this point. So I had asked the um, school board chair and um, superintendent if they would provide us their feedback about how they feel like that process has worked for them. Um, so this looks like this is Brian's email, perhaps with Clint's comments. Is that what we're yeah, seeing? Yeah, I went all over, I went all through it pretty thoroughly, and I thought it was yeah. a great document. So I just added an awful lot, and I, but I thought it was great. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else had time to see it. It came to me yesterday afternoon. I you would think I would know, given that I live with the school board president, but I didn't see it until this morning. Um, so it came to you all early this morning. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. So the, I, I mean, I'm sharing it here for briefly, but if I may, the, the only thing that kind of so, and then you'll see it in the comments as I start to go, and I could share it out with the yep. 
the word evaluated, <clears throat> and again, and I think there's been some reference to this, the ICMA mentions it. I think one of the counselors mentioned it. Brian mentions it. You know, you and I, it was it you, Jacob, that said it at the council meeting. You guys get elected. That's the ultimate three-year evaluation you'll have as a counselor. You know, do you or don't you get reelected? It doesn't mean you fail. It just means that they're electing someone else they think that be more likely to succeed. I've been looking at the goals you're setting and the goal setting process, and I really like where we're headed. And I think that's one of the ones that's going to tie back. I am, full disclosure, not that I'm opposed or for, I have major reservations as town manager at any time being 360 evaluated using that exact words, using my exact title to a general public comment. I mean, the police department arrests people, um, the school department asks us to serve notices on students that shouldn't be on the property and parents that shouldn't be on the property. And one of the comments I said is ultimately the level of scrutiny that councils and town managers bring based upon taxes is completely different than what a school would see or anybody else would see. So I may be very effective at my job, but the comments in a directed 360 of me publicly could be extremely derogatory because I have been effective at my job. And that's right. the one thing that we've got to balance. And that's where I went back to the goals. And I, I'm wondering if, and I use the term survey to kind of be as a new supplement to evaluation. What if the performance was a, was a performance survey of council goals and town productivity, where people could provide feedback on that, then you use that results to write my evaluation, not to be my evaluation, but to help center it. So then there's a dialogue between you and I. So right. again, some people will be pretty direct. He arrested my nephew and I can't believe he let that nephew get arrested. Well, I can't go in and ever tell you, or he fired my wife. Okay, well, that's an HR issue. If you want to bring that into me, we can go into those. But again, those right. are the ones where I can't tell you sometimes when, and this is such a weird balancing act. I'm trying to keep you very well informed, but HIPAA is a really messy one. I can't tell you about the medical situations of our employees. And there are multiple HIPAA related matters in front of the town right now. Um, so, uh, you know, that's kind of where I'm going with this to kind of make sure we get that out there. So, Clint, so Sarah, I have, oh, sorry, can I just say one thing back? And then, Jacob, I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, Clint, I think, I I mean, I think that's an, it's an issue of terminology. I don't think any disagreement about what the process would be, because every detail I've read in the school board document that came to us and the ICMA document and everything in Sonia's report, I think it's crucial that the information that comes from the public about our town manager's performance regardless of what we call it, whether it's a performance survey or an evaluation, no matter what the name is, that information is confidential personnel information yep. about you that would only ever be seen by the town council and that the town council would simply look at it as one of many factors in what would actually become your formal evaluation by the town council. Okay. So and that's the thing I just wanna make clear. I think we can talk about terminology, but what matters to me is that we are clear that that information is confidential personnel information that would only be seen by the board. I mean, sorry, in our case, the council. And again, it would be one of many factors in what would become our evaluation process of our town manager. Okay, Jacob, go ahead. Uh, what does the school board, or, yeah, what does the school district use this information for and maybe it says it but I, I i haven't read anything that came this morning or i haven't read everything in thoroughness that came this morning so what does the yeah. school board use this information for i think pretty much what i just said um from reading the information from meredith and brian here my understanding is it comes to the board it's confidential it's talked about in an executive session right by the board that feedback is talked about I don't even think that it happens. I mean, it, I don't, I, I can ask them because I'm not sure they delineated. I think it's a just a half hour discussion in an executive session and at a different time, the board has their formal evaluation process of the superintendent. So I do not think they're even, done simultaneously from reading this, but I can clarify with them if you want me to. 
No, that's fine. So it's an it's used as part of the evaluation process for the superintendent. Yeah, it's input. It's input to the board that they can hear from the community because obviously, there's you know very different perspectives. That's part of the 360 evaluation process is valuing that everyone brings different perspectives. As Clint said, and Brian highlights, you really have to take any individual comment with a pretty big grain of salt, right? But if a comment starts showing up multiple times, you know, five people make a similar kind of comment, then you might start to think, oh, there might be a theme here. I mean, as a council or as a board, you might say, oh, that might be something we need to actually talk about and take a look at, right? Um, there's a big bias on any kind of surveys, and Sonia could say this more than me, I'm sure, that people tend to fill them out more than anything when they're really unhappy, <laughs> sometimes when they're really happy, and almost never when they're somewhere in the middle. Sonia, can you speak to that at all? <laughs> I think that that can be true. Um, and also, um, it's still it's still a useful exercise to be gathering feedback. And um, I think the, the council is equipped to just do a discerning job of um, understanding that holistically. And I'll second what Sarah said about kind of looking for recurring themes or big patterns and including on a year to year basis, like, you know, if the same kind of comment comes up multiple years in a row, then that's also a signal that, oh, you know, here's an opportunity for improvement. So really the value of these is less about identifying, you know, if there are, if there is some sort of massive human rights issue that comes to the surface, we'd want to know about that. But that's, uh, given that that's pretty unlikely, um, the more likely thing is that this is, this is a mechanism for gaining feedback that can get integrated into setting goals for how we want to improve as a town and then, um, you know, work, work on the goals um, can be integrated into how the managers um, and the council evaluates itself in a more holistic way. Thanks, Sonia. That's really helpful. I do think it's also important. My internet connection appears to be a bit unstable. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let me know if I cut out or something. Um, that was really helpful, Sonia. And I, I do think it's also important to note that, you know, this is also a commitment that council made that we would be doing 360 evaluations of the town manager and of ourselves. Um, so, and it may be evaluation, as I said, we can talk terminology, but it would be, it's a time for the community to give feedback in a 360 way that informs the evaluation that council does. Um, I want to pause a minute and talk a little here about the evaluation of council, if we can do that for a second. Um, I know Jacob raised this question um, at the meeting and Clint has said again, well, you get evaluated when you get elected off in three years and we're on again. Um, I think that's true, but I think it's really important to be aware of what that metric is not good for, right? It's a very blunt tool, right? The do you get elected, do you not get elected? It could be because you took one vote on something that somebody was very opposed to. It could be because you're... Um, opponent is terrific or is terrible. So you might be no good at all at your job in people's minds on council, but the other option seems worse, right? So it's a pretty blunt instrument and it doesn't give us any real feedback, not of us individually, but of us as a group, as a council. I think Sonia can speak to this, that the goal of this is not to try to in any way evaluate how any individual counselor is doing, but rather to evaluate whether the council as a whole appears to be moving in direction that the community feels good about and also whether it's actually just doing what it said it would do. So if council sets goals for itself, this is the community's chance to give us feedback on how well we're actually achieving those goals. And we should have goals in place by December 9th. Okay, Sonia, that's what I have to say about the council side. Do you wanna say more about that? Sure, yeah, I'll just chime in and say that, um, yeah, as I was, uh, thinking about this in relation to being a democratically elected body, um, I do really see that the highest value of a survey of council, which I will say is um, pretty unusual. It's not common practice for towns to do this level of, of, of self-evaluation as, as a democratically elected body, but I think there's value to it. Um, and it's something that council has expressed interest in and committed to. And so the um, yeah, how I would see this being helpful is as um, a way to get data that allows the council to build the kind of work plan that's going to um, 
you know, be really ground truth by what people in town are experiencing and have to say on a year to year basis. So a faster turnaround than the three year cycle of electing people on and off of the town council. Um, and uh, there's also, um, I think that it allows the council to be um, asking questions for uh that allow it to communicate more effectively or to put in the work to um, you know, operate more collegially or build the kind of culture that people wanna see. So um, it is, I think of it on the level of, of an aggregate, the council as a whole, how uh, are they to engage with and are they working on the kinds of things that people in town think they should be? Or are people in town aware that they're working on the things that people in town think they should be? So the council may in fact have a work plan where they're working on the kinds of priorities that they promised to when they got elected. But if the council isn't disseminating that information and people don't know about it, then that opens up like, oh, there's a communication um, opportunity here to be sharing that better. So it could be helpful in a variety of ways for just helping the council both work on things that are important to people in town and also helping the council, uh, you know, self-evaluate whether it's doing what it wants to do by way of communication and constant um, relationship with with stakeholders. Thanks, Sonia. Um, any other questions about sort of purpose in terms of evaluating council, purpose in terms of getting feedback about the town manager from other perspectives before we do our evaluation of the town manager as a council? So, Town manager feedback isn't going to be public um, because that's an HR type of scenario. But I would imagine that our, the council's evaluation of the council would be public because we are publicly elected officials. So would, it, it, is the, evaluation towards specific counselors? Is it towards the council as a whole? And I ask this not because I, you know, care about um, being called out specifically in, the, in these evaluations, but I could see an issue where we are, where this should be public information where it could get petty if people are evaluating individual counselors and not the council as a whole. Am I not understanding Quinn, you, this correctly? Yeah, they will be eventually. Clearly it needs to be the council as a whole, but you're right that there's no control over what someone writes in a comment box. So, mm -hmm. but there's no control over what someone says at a meeting either. The public always has the ability to come and speak about any individual counselor at a meeting. I mean, they can't do it for staff, but they always can, you know, for elected officials. Could you share, Clint, the sample um, RSU 26 board evaluation? If you screen share that, Jacob, are you? Um, that, uh, yeah, let me, I can pull it up right now. Give you a really good idea. I think Clint can screen share. Um, uh, I can, I'm looking, okay, I'll pull it up right now. It's attached to your email. Yep, board evaluation. Advice. If you click on that, I think it was in Brian's email and it was also in Sonia's report both. Um, that would give, um, so let's see, Clint, you could scroll down. The first thing, just ask people to identify who they are, what category of people are they mm -hmm. a board member themselves, a teacher, whatever in our case would be a community member. So the board, this is where it's difficult for us to envision exactly what our survey will look like until we get through this goal setting process that council's starting now in November and finalizing on December 9th. But Ultimately, in the school's case, the school board had three values that it said were their core values. And so it asked the community, how are we doing on those? Are we living those values, right? Are we doing things that match these values? And then there's an open-ended question. Give us any more feedback about these values and how we're doing on them. And then they, the board, the school board then has six what they call ongoing responsibilities, things they think are their responsibilities every year. And it lists each of these and says, how are we doing on fiscal responsibility? Give us some examples. Um, if you scroll, Clint, I don't know what the next one is, but 
How are we doing on improving our buildings and facilities to meet our educational mission, right? Give us some feedback. Um, and it goes through six core responsibilities like this. And then in their model, they had also created, I think, three very specific goals for that particular year. So eventually it gets to those three goals. But all of these are very broad categories that in no way comment on any individual board member or counselor. They talk about the board as a whole and how it is doing at meeting the goals that it has publicly stated are its goals. Does that help, Jacob? It, it does. I Yes. Well, and this is where, and again, I guess this is where I'm going to jump in to kick over to the town manager. I And again, as much as you want to do multiple levels of this, is it important that the ta the community, Joe Q citizen, evaluates me as my abilities as a manager or evaluates my ability to work with a council as a manager? As you look Why at the components, switch? I'm wondering if that's the, you want to go over to the other one? Yeah, let's switch because personally, Clint, I do think it matters because I think that people's interactions with you are very separate from interactions with the council. You have so many more than we ever do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really liked Meredith. So let's pull up the superintendent's one to look at. And then Sonia, you can speak to this too next, but we might as well look at, we have a sample one anyway here. So it doesn't make it um, yeah, it's not, let me zoom it. I think it's so I think it, I just want to point out right away that Sonia highlighted for us that ICMA has right core competencies for a town manager. That's the, what does that stand for again? International City Managers Association, Clint? Do I have that right? Yeah. And there is a similar body for superintendents. So you'll see that what they did was they pulled the standards for superintendents. Um, not all of them, I don't think, although I haven't looked at the ISLIC whatever standards, but they pulled the ones at least that they felt were most important to Orono and said, how is this person doing on this standard for superintendents that's been vetted by this national organization. Um, personally, in addition to the fact that ICMA has standards, I don't know if you all remember other counselors, but we surveyed the community as part of our town manager search about which of those ICMA standards were the most important ones to people in Orono. And Sony, do you remember like 350 or so people responded, correct? 400, something like that? Yeah, it was... Um... It was in the upper 300, so a pretty right. good survey response for a town of our size. And um, we did use that feedback in developing the search parameters um, and evaluation for um, candidates for the manager position. So it was really helpful feedback um, that um, we got great responses from the community about. What and I that, think is nice. I like, I like yeah. that a lot component because it's tied to it. Just remember, I'm being nervous of the council that comes in and writes a survey that's extremely poignant and directed and has an ulterior <laughs> purpose. I will not right. participate in a public 360 that's going to yeah. be a grinding mission. And again, yeah, you should. And nor should yeah. the council want a process that does that. If that if right. we're at that moment, you should be able to fix it without it going public. And that's where, you know, asking the questions. And again, I agree that they're confidential. And I appreciate that. But again, the more we decouple this too from my ability to my pay and my contracts is the better it is because the yep. reality is this is an improvement tool. 360s are improvement tools. Where are the areas to work on? You tell me what I got to fix. I come back and show you what I've done to improve that area. Then you can evaluate whether I've been successful or not in that effort. That's what I'm trying to evolve to. And I think it's the trap that a lot of communities fall into is that oh, well, we got an issue. Let's just start over. No, you, no, you're always going to have an issue. I'm not a perfect manager. No manager you get will be perfect. I have strengths and weaknesses. You know, how much you want me to work on a weakness is up to you on guiding my path forward as your employee. And I want to be that employee. So that's where I like, yeah, if we tie this and yeah, the ICD right. has a great, I've already done my standard self-assessment on that so yep. that I can get my certification back. And um so those, you know, and there was a ton of areas. It's a, it's an interesting self-assessment tool. They're trying to rebuild it because it's kind of dated. Um, but that being said, yeah, I like tying it to those principles and I don't have them out, but we can find those and share those at a future. I meeting. have them if you let me screen share. But what's actually, I think, interesting is they've reduced them. There were 18 when we did our survey um, and now it's down to 14. 
and it's still too many. We don't want to ask that that many questions of the community. What's nice is because we surveyed the community in January, we actually know what were the top five ICMA criteria from feedback in our community or the top seven, whatever number we went for, right? Like somewhere around five, six, seven is a probably reasonable number to ask about. Um, so I can I think you screen. Gotta... Yeah, if you have the regular ICMA ones from Sonia's report. Uh, is it in the report, Sonia? If I do have your report. If I, it's uh, a I link on ICMA, uh, but so oh, link, yes, I do have it up. You're yeah, right. I did my report that. links to a longer report from ICMA that is best practices for three six three of or for evaluations of town managers, which includes a section on these kinds of three sixty evaluations. I got it. So got uh, it. Pretty comprehensive. And yeah, I do. Um, I really appreciate uh, Clint's comments. I think that they're really um important that that as council is developing a process that's going to work in the long haul but you know we do try to set up something that can be um a, a model that's really repeated year after year um ideally like you know this council can't control what future councils will do nor nor should they in the democratic spirit of how this you know our our system operates but um but it's most helpful if a survey is repeated um, with very few changes from year to year so that you can really track um, you know, how things are on long time horizons. And there's the stability of an employee or a group being evaluated kind of knowing what to expect. And so uh, you know, it, it can be helpful to tweak things that aren't working um, as the years go by, but also there's really high value in setting up something that's a good model that we think is really gonna work for or um, from the get-go so that it just can be uh, used in perpetuity as long as future councils, um, you know, agree that it's a model that's working well. Am I screen sharing at this point? Uh, is this what you were looking for? I don't know. Can you see what I'm screen sharing right now? I'll stop my yeah. share. So you okay. So I'm just showing you, this is back from our town manager search survey that went out to the community. As I said, there were 18 leadership competencies for managers at that point in time for ICMA that we sent out to the community. And we got pretty clear data back about which ones mattered the most, right? So I would think that these would be the top, whatever we would decide where the cutoff was, but the top five, the top six, whatever seven, I would think at the most that we would put out to the community that would be ICMA standards that we then have, you know, not just we know that they're ICMA standards, but also that our community has said, these are the top ones, you know, for us when we did the search. And we incorporated this into the job description that Clint saw when he was doing his whole application um, procedure. So they would be standard, you know, from the time we began our interactions with Clint, nothing would have changed on that. Um, so I was thinking this made sense um, as like the core for the town manager evaluation. Um, and I've and let other people speak now. Is Clint, and this sounds weird because I'm talking about him when he's right there, but is Clint going to have a say in the questions that we ask in the survey? Because I I can see where we wouldn't want that, but I could also see to what you were talking about, Clint, that you would want a say in what questions are being asked because there, uh, some things are out of your control. Um, you know, people, uh, uh, my street's not getting plowed enough. Well, is that really a town manager issue or is that a budgeting issue? Is that a, so I, I yeah, I guess, I'm, yeah. I have strong comfort level with this council and questions you would ask. The responses, I think as long as there's respect to say, yeah, Jacob, you're right. We're not getting our roads plowed enough. Well, I'm going to give a response to this council saying, you know, if you recall last year's budget, we asked for a new plow truck and three new drivers. And you said no. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying it's not good feedback, but at this point, it's about your goals and the balancing of the budget. I did that with you. We are a team. And this is the model we chose for service delivery. If you think this yeah. needs to be addressed, it's now a bigger issue than just that, hey, Clint, you got to get your team doing more work. 
I said, well, you know, then we need probably better data because they're doing the best they can. They think we need more support. And yeah. Green. So I think that's, this is where, and this is why I think Gorno's on to something great. This is creating the dialogue that sets a priority and sets a standard that no other community I've ever seen is meeting to really, truly engage what we, who we are as Orno and the ability for me and you to do the job, our job. Kind of yeah. exciting. And I, I'd love to jump in and Jacob just sort of, uh, I really appreciate, I think Clint's uh, using the word dialogue is really astute here. And in my mind, as someone who's kind of, who's really thought about and done some reading on this, it's um, the, part of what's really helpful here is ultimately it's council's decision like council um this the evaluation of the manager is one of the areas in which um council has the most power and the most responsibility to be using um the way that it governs it's um you know who we uh have and how we um uh supervise the town manager is one of council's most important roles that and the budget um but uh, council, I think, would be wise to and has a real opportunity, um, not because it has to, but because it can, to make sure that the town manager is uh, kind of included in this conversation around, well, how do we want to be building a relationship and how can we use this information productively to be uh, growing as a team and um, just evaluating the the way that things are working within the structures and the power dynamics that are embedded in our system of governance. You know, the, the system that we have, um, the, the sort of manager council system of governance has real strengths and real um, challenges. And, you know, one of the challenges is that there is a lot of power centralized in the position of the, the town manager. And, um, and that's also a strength that makes that person able to kind of act nimbly and get things done on behalf of the town. And so the relationship between manager and council is really important. And I think that we build, the council builds the best relationship with a manager that it can by being, um, you know, honest and, and including the manager in these things while also uh, remembering that at the end of the day, it does have the power to make decisions that it feels are in the best interest of the town. So, so I love the word dialogue. I think that's a really good way to be thinking about and framing this um, and it also, I think, is important for counselors and the public to just think critically about like, okay, well, how is this contextualized within the, the power dynamics that exist? And it's important to be doing, um, you know, evaluation and be thoughtful about, um, uh, you know, about doing real evaluation so that we can be learning, growing, and um, using opportunities to make sure that things are functioning as well as they can be. Yeah, Sonia, I wanted to sort of add something on that and just to say on both sides, right? Because I mean, we're we're focusing, you know, right now we're and again, we're back to talking in the town manager evaluation, but like on the council evaluation, it's not just done by community members, you know, it's done by staff, right? And that's important too, because it's a chance for staff to anonymously get feedback to us about how is the relationship going from their end. And that's not just the town manager, that's all staff at all levels. But I think it's really important, this word that Clint has brought up and that Sonia is highlighting about what this should be is a tool for dialogue that helps us to have the dialogues that might be sometimes hard to have without a formal and structured tool giving people that chance to you know, have that input. Um, and I also think that as far as the how it's planned and how jointly it's planned, Sonia, speak up if I missed something, but in every piece of the documents you sent, and also I believe in one that Brian linked in his, um, I read over and over again how important it is that the goals that are going to be evaluated are set far in advance and that the manager and council have done that together so that what is getting evaluated, everybody knows up front. And so there's no surprise, like council doesn't change what's going to be on this evaluation like a month before it goes out, right? We're really clear it needs, I, this is again why I think it actually shouldn't happen till next fall, but I mean, other people may disagree, but um, because I would love to have a system where council sets its goals this December and we actually build what this survey is going to look like, like now in you know by january but it isn't going out for a very long time so that um 
you know, everyone knows what parameters they're operating in. Like, what is it that we're going to be getting feedback on and that the town manager does have input in that because they've seen it months and months ahead. But that's me. Everyone else should speak I up. I absolutely agree, Sarah. And I'm just making the distinction between like, does council have the add some like bonkers, silly gotcha question at the late stage in the game? Of course, council has that power, but why would it want to do that? That's a, like a silly yeah. way to be building a relationship with, um, a, you know, the employee that is our employee to manage. We want to be um, building a relationship that's fair and that is productive. And that includes like, of course, jointly setting the parameters around how we want to be um, operating and um, running this town together. And so I love Sarah's framework of making sure that there's plenty of time um, and a really healthy process around that. Clint, can you go back to sharing um, the superintendent evaluation one more time on the screen? Yeah, I'm going to get it all up. I will stop my screen share. Oh, right there. All right, share. Okay, so if we scroll... These first standards all are the standards that are like the equivalent of ICMA. You know, they're the national or international superintendent standards. If you keep scrolling or going the other direction, um, when we yeah, get through see. six, okay, um, then go up a little bit here. Uh, sorry, the other way. Yo, okay, sorry, goals. So it switches here. And I believe if we go to the top, there's an explanation for the public that the first ones they're asking are categories that are from the International Superintendent Association. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, it's not here. Maybe it's on the version Brian sent me. I think it's on the, I think it's on another version. Yeah, I think it's on the version Brian sent. Let's see if one of us can find that. Um, anyway, there's an intro or a section which says these are international superintendent standards. We're asking you to evaluate Ms. Higgins on. And then it switches and says, these are sp three specific goals that council has charged our superintendent with this year that we believe are ones where the public would have valuable feedback. So I wanted to highlight that because they're not asking for feedback on every goal that the town manager had. They're saying, these are the ones where we think that the public might have valuable feedback to give us. Um, and I found that to be really important um, I was reading in one of the links that I guess Sonia sent, I remember now I took a note, I could find it, but basically saying that anything you're going to be asking the public for feedback on needs to be like very outcome based, like something they can actually see and measure and respond to. They're going to have no feedback on internal processes between the council and the manager or council and staff. That stuff shouldn't be on the part that you know goes out to the public what the public should see or you know say we charged clint for example to um i don't know build a town park in the center of orono this is your goal for the year clint build us a beautiful town park right this would be something it would be relevant to the public like how did it come out did it come out the way the community was hoping how's the process going if we're halfway through whatever but it would not make sense to be asking you know the general public to assess like how is clint managing his staff I mean, they have no input in that, right? Um, so that I think is where, Sonia, I would love your feedback. Um, I'm assuming, and I, I don't know, did you find the other version of this that Brian shared, Clint? I can, let me stop share and look for it okay. real quick. I think because I had an intro and I could ask him, but I wasn't clear. Um, this survey to me, it still said at the top of the superintendent survey, was there still a box where you could say I'm a staff member or I'm a community member, I'm assuming? Um, yes, there is board member, staff member, parent, yeah. so on and so forth. And do you see the intro section, Jacob, or somewhere where it yes, explains yep. that? Yeah, the board evaluates it? and communicates. The board evaluates and communicates this evaluation to the superintendent every fall. That one? Um. Yeah, yeah, but no, somewhere where it sort of says to go oh, ahead, the ISSLC standards. Yeah, and then later it switches and says, here are some, okay, here we go. This has yeah, more language in I it. Downloaded it. It took a ton of content out. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, um, goals. The board sets performance goals for Superintendent Higgins. Some of these overlap with the uh, ISSLC right. standards. Yeah. And so we've picked the ISL standards that we think overlap with the goals we yep. have agreed jointly with our superintendent. So we're asking you to evaluate those. 
And then here are some, right? The second category is some specific goals, right? Um, That's yeah. what I'm telling yes. you. Yeah. Goals. And so, you know, this is, this made sense to me that there would be specific goals that we have set for Clint that might be relevant for getting feedback on. I'm sure this is not all the goals they gave Meredith, <laughs> you know, in her, as Clint is talking about his work plan, these are simply the ones that, um, seem to have a very public facing outcome that the public might have input on. Do you have something to say, Clint? Yeah. Because they're not like, you're going to set goals. It's not the goals you're about to adopt. Those right. are going to be broad general things of what you want to see me accomplish with all the staff, but you guys might come back. And that's where I kind of some initial communications with you and, and, and Dan, I kind of shared out is, is that the council should come forward, whether it's seven specific tasks that, that, you know, and again, we want to see the union street boat launch cleaned up. We want to see a decision on route two. We want to see a decision on whatever, you know, we want to see a capital improvement plan that's all encompassing and goes beyond the requirements oh. of the tag of three years. We want 10 years, you know, and you put those out, you give me time to do it. We're going to hit those marks. It's easy, but it's one of those ones that it's nice to know what those are up front because otherwise, and again, this is where we've been talking and we we're going to meet. I've been working in this kind of gray area of, I got a whole bunch of information. I'm trying to glean which ones are the problem. Yeah, we need to narrow that down for you because right now it's not working. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah. I lost you all. So, ahead, so one thing I'll I'll add to that um, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to yes, narrow it down for clarity. It's helpful clarity for um, Clint, and it also um, the best survey from the perspective of a survey respondent is the shortest possible survey. So. Um, yeah, trying to really winnow down, well, what is it that we, that information from the public really will help us better understand how we're doing as a town. That is what we want and we want to keep it short and sweet to as few questions as possible in that regard. And I guess, Sonia, I have a question for you about this. And then I want to be sure anyone who has any more questions for you gets to ask them because we are down to our last minutes. My only other question is, I did not ask the superintendent or um, the board chair from the schools, whether these are the only questions that go to staff or whether staff get asked anything further, because I could imagine there might be some other questions to staff if we're doing a true 360 that um, might be relevant, but perhaps they're just covered on those ICMA standards as long as we make sure one of them is something about developing strong and empowering and whatever relationships with staff, right? Um, so, do you have any comment on that? Do you envision something where there'd be something different that would be going out to staff or that this would be one survey and people I know are told they should just skip whatever questions don't apply to them, right? Yeah, I think it could be done either way. And to me, um, the, the question of whether to have a couple of surveys that are targeted to specific audiences versus one survey that that everyone participates in and just selects what kind of um, stakeholder they are. To me, that um, is secondary to what are the big picture goals? What is the work plan? And um, that detail follows from the big picture and the um, a real sense of like, well, what's the feedback that we want? And then once we know what's the feedback that we want or that the town of Orono wants, I shouldn't say we anymore. Um, <laughs> It uh, the question of one survey versus two is a pretty simple mechanistic way to get what we want. Okay, who else has questions for Sonia they haven't asked because we have her here right now. I would just respond to what Sonia just brought up and say it might actually be helpful in figuring out what we want and thinking about what we want specifically from each of the different stakeholder groups. I, I don't know that I, I fully agree that it's secondary um, because what we want to know from each of these groups is going to be slightly different. As we've already been talking about, what we want to get from the public is going to be different from what we want to get from staff. I think, uh, I don't know, I, I I think it maybe is something yeah. that we think about the whole way through. That's a great point, Rob. And if, if like a key thing that the council wants is um, we would like to really have, um, you know, an opportunity for robust feedback from staff um, as as the we have a new manager building relationships and looking for opportunities to be growing in that way, then 
then that's uh, a key, that's an example of a key priority that might shift us in the direction of like, no, we really do want a separate survey for staff so that they have a little bit more opportunity to um, answer a few more questions about that are staff particular. That's a great point, Rob. Any other questions for Sonia? I don't, I don't have anything, to... Sonia. Um, it's not so much a question as much as I want to sort of reinforce something that Clint's brought up a few times, which is um, uh, try, we, we want to be sensitive. And I think we all agree. Uh, we want to be sensitive to the, the particular um, things that are worth being nervous about as a town manager, um, having the public input. And I think our, our that having a confidential is important, but also thinking pretty clearly about the pointedness of the questions that we do ask of the public, um, helping make sure that we are framing it in such a way as to minimize that other unhelpful, potentially abusive language, you know, whatever the other information that people might want to put in there, people who are relatively uninformed or not you know, excluded in the process or have their particular access to grind. How do we frame the questions so as to, as much as possible, guide people's feedback into a productive format? Thanks, Rob. I really agree. I think that's a really important point. Clint, when you read through the survey of the superintendent, did you see any kind of question in there that made you uncomfortable? No, what I liked, so first things first, I liked them because I know people are going to give uncomfortable responses for me. And they're going to go, but with those questions, they're going to be off topic. They're going right. to stretch. And as long as I got a respectful council that's working with, uh, we are that team, it's going to be kind of evident. And 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 again, I want to fix stretches from time to time because there are, even though I make a bad, hard, rash decision, you know, or by hard decision, and it's what's right and uses integrity, that employee may be very upset. I'm more focused on, and I've been trying to get at some of the surveys, what could we have done to prevent that situation from ever coming up? You know, and, and you know, there's things that it, that topics that the council and I got to talk about, you know, that we're dealing with on an HR perspective that are in, you know, that are cropping up in, in, in Orno. And those are things that I'm trying to get to the root causes so that we can prevent them. But that doesn't mean they're just going to disappear either. So, yeah, I like it. I like the survey. I think the one thing I had in my notes that I'd shared with that I have in that document that Brian had shared, you know, the confidentiality out, you know, maybe we have this reviewed by an HR, you know, we got an HR consultant that I you support me with. Maybe we kick them and say, provide feedback. So we get it done. It's what we really, really want. And then we say, okay, take a peek at this. Are we, because there's a lot of HR issues that you can stumble into that you don't even realize. We might ask a question that's extremely, it may not be illegal, but could be very awkward and inappropriate and open up some doors we don't want. And I think that's where I'm not the professional and and I'd love to, you know, Sonia's and Sonia, thank you again, your work when I first read it. Great job. You summarized everything I thought that needed to be and then some. So thank you for doing that. But I think when we get to those final surveys, let's have a someone on the outside just kind of do a, before we post this, what do you think? Any pitfalls, strengths, weaknesses, et cetera? Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. And I guess we have an HR consultant that we are already have a relationship with right now, correct, Clint? It's one I have with. You haven't met her. It may not be a bet. You're going to meet her at some point. She's about to give me a uh, risk assessment, you know, in the next few weeks that I hopefully will get to the council of some of our HR needs and issues. Um, I hope to have it for the November 4th meeting with you so that I can share it there so you can start to see what some of the things we've identified. Um, but yeah, that's the, yeah, I think it, she's, pretty good. Lori Bouchard's her name. She's got a company. She's been at it for quite a while. It doesn't have to be her. You know, if you wanted to do someone else, we could look around and see who else there is. But I just, I think we all would, the council and the, the town manager roles would be helped if an outside person looked at it before it was posted. It also gives us that ability too, when you post your survey saying, hey, we didn't write this to survey ourselves. We had input mm -hmm. from school, we had a couple outside consultants, the town manager weighed in, staff kind of took a look. You know, this isn't us just kind of coming at us for what we want to know. It's what we think we want to hear from you and what you may want to share. So, yeah, I like that idea. I think I, I, I'm curious. I know we're out of time. 
So I'm aware maybe we cycle back and we start with that. I think um, that's a wonderful idea. And I saw it in several recommendations to run it by an HR consultant, if, you know, especially for a newer um, council, which we are, but, you know, just in general, counselors are not HR experts. And I think um, it also addresses some of what you brought up before, Clint, about if you had a council that was going totally off the rails, <laughs> right, and was doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, somebody would comment on that, right? Um, and so I think that seems like a great idea. I have no idea what that would cost to have somebody take a look at something, but maybe that's something you could find out um, from Lori, what she might charge for that. Um, I am a bit curious from Sonia did such a really great job with our last survey results and turning them into a like, you know, one page thing for us back. I don't know if that's anything we want to consider, but I think we'll cycle back next time. My only real question to you all, I think this was a great original uh, discussion. I will, before our next meeting, type up some of the many notes that I took about um, some thoughts that we expressed that might work. People will have time to think in between. Are people comfortable with my um, at least reaching back out to the council chair on timelines? I do want to hear, do everybody feel differently than me and really want this to happen in February with results in April, which would be the same time as our discussion about Clint's compensation? Or are people interested in having this happen when we're not talking about Clint's compensation? Or where are we at with that? Should I talk to the council chair? Do we not know? Like, where? how do we feel? I think we should talk to the council chair, but also, um, you know, I think as was expressed a few times earlier in the meeting, I, I think we don't want this coupled to, I mean, maybe we didn't come to consensus about it, but I was thinking that we didn't want this coupled to compensation or, or to, to feel like this was at all part of the same process. We definitely don't. And my concern is that if we do it in April, it may be hard to keep it very separate, but I don't know. Maybe we can do it in April and we don't talk. I don't know when, when do we start talking manager compensation, Clint, in the budget? So you're again. What the Dan had talked about was is that the compensations you will put something in the budget, and then after the budget's approved, after my annual eval, you may do it retroactive to at some point. And again, I'm negotiable on this because when I'm hired should never be a reason. I mean, so what if you'd hired the manager in March or you'd hired him in November, and then you stick them to this process or you adjust it to when you hired them? As long as we have a consistency to it, set the consistency, and I'm going to be good. Um, I think the bigger thing here is I think what I did hear earlier, Sarah, you have two timelines. Mm -hmm. The one you're talking about, whether it's April, maybe even May-ish, yeah. is probably the council survey. Yeah. What you want in the fall is the manager survey, and you probably want to couple that to me. And I think yeah. that's where you're probably going to make a decision on pay and benefits. Dan was overly concerned, I think, at one point as chair that my compensation was tied to my higher date in the fiscal year of July 1. I am less concerned about that than that the process to look at this makes sense. And I think if you're doing an early fall kind of September input, and then the meeting is maybe in November, December for the manager's pay and compensation adjustment, I think that's fine. You know, and whether it's retro or whether that's always the annual date it's implemented, doesn't matter to me either. I mean, we can work through that. That's just, that's simple in my mind, not the reason we're doing okay. this. And again, the evaluation system, and I'm going to go back to what Sonia said and we've read, this process we're talking about is not about my pay. Right, it, totally it, not. It, you guys can make, the, the council can make decisions on that and have this as an ongoing piece of the knowledge that weighs in, but again, it's going to become more fluid. Um, and I, that's what I'd like to see. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay, so we meet again in a month. Um, this was a really, really great first discussion, and I think it was uh, made that by Clint's great comments and review of documents that came in by Sonia's creating all of those documents for us, and I'm just incredibly grateful on that. Um, I guess, as I said, I will look through our notes and uh, see what I can pull together for the themes that we will look at more in depth next time. Um, Clint, you'll maybe reach out to Lori just to get a sense of how much time it is for her to look over a survey like this and give us feedback. Maybe you could send her the RSU surveys as a sample. Yep. Um, and um, I guess I'm curious what we have Sonia here. Do we have any interest in asking Sonia what she would charge us to compile survey results and do that um, sort of really great 
one, two, three page report thing she did on our town manager search surveys before, or do we feel like that won't be necessary or should we just talk about that next month? So let's talk about that next month because I Sounds don't good. know how I feel about that. Neither do I at this point, but I, I guess I'm curious if Sonia's here, if she, she has her own consulting I don't think she is here point. anymore. Okay. If she's still here, I didn't know if she was interested. That was my point. It was just like, is she even interested was my question. We can then have a discussion next month. She won't be here about what we want to do. Email I'll, her, email her. Her. Email yeah. her. I'll email her. You email her. I'll email her. And that's great. Thank you all. I feel like so much um, excitement about this very cool and interesting process we're developing. It feels like it's going to really open up a dialogue and build a really, I think, fabulous relationship between manager and council and community if we do this well. So thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. See Clint? Yes. Are you still there? Um, Hang on. We're still, I, I want to, we got to, I got to stop recording. <laughs>